Hello everybody, Anthony Carlo here at Iona College. That's right, the B next to me is not in the broadcast booth. Ben Zeno, the hero, uh, not in this segment right now. The A is breaking off a little bit from AB Conversation, uh, our, our normal show. Ben Zeno, the hero, and I do every Wednesday at 4.30, but today it's just the A riding solo, and um, it has been a difficult, it's been a difficult week, week in sports. Um... I have a you know a few things going on that really if if you are a sports fan if you're a Vikings fan you're you're disappointed right now if you're a Yankees fan you're disappointed right now so what it is what is it about all of these things regarding the thing we love the most sports that's making us so disappointed disappointment you figure in things that you love in life there shouldn't be no disappointment involved. And if you think about the situation that the Vikings are in right now, and you think about their fans right now, you think about a situation that is very much invol involving disappointment. And you're thinking about the Yankees on a whole other level. They're obviously disappointed in one, in one respect as well, because they're saying goodbye to... The one person that made their their franchise special, especially in today's day and age, one person has captivated Yankees fans. And, and actually, as you could see from the, the type of respect that Derek Jeter is getting now from all of baseball, captivated fans across the board. And to draw a correlation between these two things, of mentioning the Vikings and their organization, their fans in disappointment right now, and the Yankee organization, and their fans in disappointment right now. It may seem like it's, I'm coming from two totally different ballparks, which, I mean, essentially I am. I'm comparing football and baseball, but I'm drawing this correlation that disappointment is involved heavily in sports this week and, 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 in, and most likely weeks to come. And with something that people love so much, like people love sports, It'd be hard to it'd be hard to explain why love the love of sports why there's disappointment involved and I'll explain exactly why that happens. People are people like to become attached to things. People like to the things that they love. They they love especially sports. It becomes a passion for people, and people relate to Derek Jeter, Adrian Peterson. Players like this, they looked up to them. They look up to them as if they're heroes, and they essentially are for for the younger generation in our in our uh, in our society. For the older generation, I don't care who it is, men, women, children, people look up to these players as if they can do things that they themselves never dreamt of doing. Adrian Peterson is arguably the greatest, you know, running back in the game today. I mean, people make an argument with with me. They they'll they'll tell me Lashawn McCoy. They'll tell me Jamal Charles. They'll they'll they may throw a Marshawn Lynch up there. Um, but the 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 facts are facts. Adrian Peterson is arguably you can make an argument, but he makes a case for being the best running back in the game today. People have to understand how many people in this world. Right now, because of that title Adrian Peterson develops for himself, how many people in this world look up to Adrian Peterson for that particular reason? They look up to Adrian Peterson, not only little kids, aspiring athletes, high school athletes, college athletes, but the world, the world comes together on Sunday. In so many households across the country, People sit down on a Sunday looking for enjoyment, looking to make the worries of their work week, the worries of their life all melt away and disappear for a few hours or maybe a whole Sunday. If you have the NFL Red Zone, you know what I'm talking about. But they sit down and they look to enjoy and forget about everything that has been bothering them. Their escape, their escape is football. Their escape is Adrian Peterson. Their escape is the Vikings. And I'm not only talking about Vikings fans, because obviously Vikings fans are at the top of the list, because if anybody's going to love Adrian Peterson more than 
anyone else in football, it's going to be Vikings fans. Vikings fans, uh, Vikings fans stand at the top of the list, obviously, because that that's their team, that's their player. They are proud to say their favorite player and one of the best players in the NFL plays for their team, and not to d- diminish though what Adrian and Peterson, what his importance means to the rest of football, because it doesn't matter whether you're a Vikings fan, whether you're a fan of whatever team you may be a fan of in the NFL, Adrian Peterson makes the game better. Adrian Peterson brings joy to your household. If you're a football fan that enjoys using football as an escape on a Sunday or a Monday or a Thursday, you indeed use Adrian Peterson, whether you're a Vikings fan or whether you're a fan of another team, you use Adrian Peterson as an escape. Now you may wonder, wow, I, I, I don't really understand how, how I can, how I can be a fan of you know, whatever, whatever we're told, the the Jets, uh, the Jets, the Giants, and look at Adrian Peterson as, a, as an escape. And I'll tell you why. It's because Adrian Peterson is still one of the reasons why football is thriving on the field. He makes the game exciting. He makes he makes the game worth watching. He does things that not everybody in in this world can do. Certainly not everybody in this world and certainly not everybody in the National Football League can do what Adrian Peterson can do on the field. The Giants would be lucky to have somebody like Adrian Peterson as their running back. They have Rashad Jennings right now and not that I, not that we're, I'm complaining about Rashad Jennings, but hands down, if I was handed the the option of taking Adrian Peterson over Rashad Jennings, I think that I would take Adrian Peterson. The the Jets dealing with you know Bilal Powell and Chris Ivory and Chris Johnson they they I'm sure would put all three of those out on a on a limb if they were able to bring in Adrian Peterson to their organization. So the point I'm making is is that when you're even when you're an opponent of the Vikings when you're on the other side and you're facing you're facing Adrian Peterson on the other side of that ball. You you respect somebody with that magnitude of talent. You respect somebody who captures the game with the amount of talent that he possesses the way Adrian Peterson does. You don't only have to be a Vikings fan. That shows you how much greater it is that if you are a Vikings fan because you have the ability to support one of the best players in the game. But it also shows you that, one, that they're also respected. And they change not only the fans of that their particular team, these great players, but they change the fans of the whole game. Because fans of every other team respect that player. Fans of every other team are excited. They may hate that player just because they're so good. And they're exciting to watch. And they're, they, they, they're, it gives them reason to believe in their own team that they can rise up and beat a challenge, overcome a challenge as good as Adrian Peterson. It, 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 it's a circle. It's a circle. It goes around in a circle, but it circulates in, it circulates in one, one, um, one, sh- one threshold, and that's the fact that players like Adrian Peterson are essential for the game. They, they allow for that escape if you will, to be used by people on Sundays, to use football as an escape. Adrian Peterson's a huge part of that. They allow for, they allow for people to be happy, co- correlate football to happiness. Players like that do. And why disappointment gets tied up in this all is because when the the, the recent allegations or the recent incidents, I should say, digress as they have in the past couple of weeks with Adrian Peterson being indicted on abuse of his four year old son with a. Uh, using a tree branch or switch as a, as a whipping method to, to abuse his son, and when he has to go and turn himself in to the police and then bail himself out for $15,000, and everything that's ensued after that, the way that the Vikings have handled the situation by many, making him sit out one game and then putting him right back on the field for, for, for the Sunday after, and the way that the, the, the nation has risen up against domestic violence and has not accepted the Vikings' decision to do such things, which has prompted the Vikings to 
revamp their choice and now suspend Adrian Peterson and put him on the exempt uh, the permission exempt commission commissioners list to to have Adrian Peterson now out of football until his legal matters are taken care of all of that that has happened that has all created disappointment for these for these fans that look forward to coming to the stadium to watch Adrian Peterson play for the Vikings the Vikings sell their tickets on Adrian Peterson. And now people who have season tickets, they're not going to get to see Adrian Peterson for a while. And, and it's going to hurt them. It's going to hurt them. Vikings fans, football fans are going to turn on the television on Sunday and not see Adrian Peterson. And they're going to be hurt. It is going to hurt. It's going to hurt the game. Adrian Peterson not on the football field hurts the game of football. So what does that mean? What does that mean for these players? What does that mean for the National Football League? Does that mean that the National Football League should not reprimand these players just to avoid hurting the game, hurting the um, success the game has, hurting the amount of fans, hurting their enjoyment of watching specific players? Does that mean the NFL has to sacrifice reprimanding these players? Does that mean that the Vikings... Uh, you know, made a a, a wrong choice um, to revamp their decision and actually suspend Adrian Peterson from all team activities until legal matters are taken care of. No, it doesn't mean any of that at all. Because you know what, the enjoyment of the game, the game in general, is going to be hurt forever, forever. It's as simple as that. Forever, if things aren't taken care of right now. So we have to sacrifice. We have to sacrifice current enjoyment, temporary enjoyment right now to preserve this game forever. Because the way that the nation, women's advocacy advocacy groups, domestic violence groups, people across the board, the way they're rising up against Roger Goodell, against the NFL, against their methods of reprimanding players, because there's been two incidents back-to-back now with Ray Rice and the Vikings organization in which football has been wrong. They didn't handle things the correct way. Roger Goodell did not sit Ray Rice for more than two games in his initial suspension, therefore, for, for um, abusing his wife. Therefore, he didn't handle that in the right way. Adrian Peterson was sat down by the Vikings organization for one game and then expected to be back on the field for abusing his son. I mean, these are two mistakes that people, people are look, you know, that they are not happy with football and the NFL the Vikings organization with the choices they've made. Therefore, no matter how big and strong the NFL may be, no matter how many people people may love football, may love the NFL, um, and how powerful we, we may think that that amounts to, there's, there's a problem when you have people rising up against a certain a certain organization, a certain um, entity here in here in our country, football is, you know, you would think it, it, you would think it is loved by many. You would think that, and it is. I mean, football across the board is the most popular sport in, in professional sports. There's no doubt about it. And the amount of people that love the game, the amount of people that spend their Sundays watching nothing but football, the amount of people that find enjoyment uh, in buying jerseys and buying NFL Red Zone and all these other things that make up how big football is in our country. I mean, it's there's no lie. It is that big. People love it that much. But when you start to get in these very, very, very touchy situations where now you have many people advocating against the NFL because of their choices, the NFL is not indestructible. I'll tell you that much. And when you get to real-life events that don't involve a missed field goal and a dropped touchdown pass and a fumble... And we're talking about real life missed field goals, real life drop touchdown pa- passes, real life, um, real life fumbles, like the choice of the Minnesota Vikings organization to sit Adrian Peterson for only one game and expect him back on the field after abusing his son, or the choice of Roger Goodell to suspend Ray Rice for only two games after seeing him drag his wife out of an elevator. Both instances basically condoning that NFL players and professional athletes are okay with domestic violence. That that That's a real-life fumble. That's a real-life 
missed field goal. That's a real life dropped touchdown pass. And what happens is real life events essentially take over when it's real life versus a game. And unfortunately, for everybody who loves football, justice in our country will be done. I mean, this is a country founded on justice. And a league, a game won't be allowed to have these players and successfully thrive as the NFL has been doing so if these players are doing such things like this and not getting punished like they should be. So the NFL has been... The NFL has been um, people, fans all across the board. They've all been suffering uh, disappointment at this time. And things have not been that much different on a whole different... It is a whole different note. I mean, the captain saying his goodbyes as a Yankee. All of that, it's a whole different note, yes. It's it's totally separate thing. But to draw the correlation of my show today... I'm drawing a correlation between the fact that there there has been disappointment in sports, professional sports this past week. And you can't fault, you can't really fault anything for that. You can't really say, disappointment, why? I mean, sports, professional sports, this is supposed to bring us joy. This is supposed to be an outlet for us. This is supposed to be a way for us to let go. You can't really explain why disappointment's connected with that because when you buy that much into something, when you invest that much of yourself and your time and your attention and your passion into something, that essentially means, you know, you love the game. You love the game to that point where you will spend that much time investing yourself into that game and that's what Vikings fans have done with Adrian Peterson and that's what football fans have done with Adrian Peterson and that's why after everything that's happened there's disappointment now and that's what Yankee fans have done with Derek Jeter the past 20 years and that's what baseball fans have done whether they they've known it or not uh, to Derek Jeter the, the past 20, 20 years I mean you get a Red Sox fan saying they've invested their passion their time their attention to Derek Jeter they have because they've watched the Red Sox play Derek Jeter in huge series for the past 20 years. And whether Derek Jeter helped the Yankees win those series or not, they still invested their time in watching their team play Derek Jeter. It meant enough to them to take time out of their day to watch the Red Sox play a team that was made so good because of their, was was so was so elite because of their, that player that was a shortstop. So with Derek Jeter, with everybody being, with everybody being in farewell mode, saying goodbye to the captain, there will be much disappointment. There will be much disappointment from the Yankee organization. There will be much disappointment um, from baseball, I think. But I think most of all now at this time, I think the the the. Um, I think the disappointment will set in when we realize that he's not coming back. I think at this time, what's going to happen is there's going to be a certain purging of the emotions. There's going to be, I think there's going to be more sadness than disappointment. And there's going to be more respect and basically let's show this man how much he's meant to my team and to the game at this moment. That's going to be the notion to Derek Jeter. Fans are going to want to show him in these remaining eight home um, eight games of this Yan- last Yankee homestand of 2014. They're going to want to show Derek Jeter how much he's meant to this organization for the past 20 years. And even at Fenway Park, baseball will show Derek Jeter how much he's meant to baseball for the last 20 years. And isn't that fitting? That baseball will get a chance to show Derek Jeter how they felt about him the past 20 years, how they've hated him all those years when he he was helping the Yankees win against their teams, but how much that meant to them, essentially, because he was an ambassador for the game. He was an example of how the game was supposed to be played, and he was fun to play against. Believe it or not, he was, of course, he made it miserable (laughs) to be an opponent 
I'm the New York Yankees at times, but at other times you looked forward 99% of the time of a series against the Yankees because they knew that you knew you'd have a, a mountain to climb with facing the Yankees led by their captain, Derek Jeter. And I'll tell you one thing. When the Red Sox didn't make the playoffs and the Yankees were in the playoffs in the recent 10 years, I remember wanting almost my my rival, the, the Boston Red Sox, whom I hate, as a Yankees fan, I, I legitimately say, at those times I hated that team. I missed them. I wanted them in the playoffs when the Yan- when it came time for the Yankees to play the Minnesota Twins or the uh, Ana- Ana- Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Whatever it was, there was no burning passion or fire in that series compared to what it what what it meant what it felt like when the Yankees and Red Sox squared off in an, in an American League Championship Series. And I missed that, and I needed that, and I wanted that. So you don't think that Red Sox fans out there and you know teams that have had the opportunity to play, have their uh, fans of teams that have had the opportunity to play against um, had their teams play against Derek Jeter and how he he made that a exciting series to watch. You know you don't think that they're out there and they're going to they're going to miss seeing Derek Jeter. They will. They will miss seeing Derek Jeter and. It's fitting that it's all going to come to an end at uh, Fenway Park because the reason why I say that is for years that have passed by, the Red Sox have hated Derek Jeter. The Red Sox fans have hated Derek Jeter um, because he was so good and because he did so much for the Yankees organization and contributed so much to their success. But they are going to miss what Derek Jeter meant to this game. And that is why it's so fitting that Derek Jeter's season and career is not going to end at Yankee Stadium with the fans showering him with love. But it's going to end at his arch rival's ballpark with the fans of baseball showering him with love. And I don't think that I think that's a very interesting way to end the story of a hero, a hero of the game. I think that is a very, very interesting way. And everybody from watching AB Conversation understands my love for Rocky as an iconic figure and the movie series. And I think it's a very good comparison here to look at Rocky IV and look at Rocky Balboa I'd say at the height of his boxing career with the defeat of Ivan Drago in Russia. Ending that story in Russia being showered by people who are at one time his arch enemy, his arch rival. I think it's very, very weird and eerie how it all comes back to those that you beat up on before as Derek Jeter has beaten up on the Red Sox before and made them feel the Red Sox fans make them feel pain as he've done has he as he's done so many times before that it would end with them thanking him for all that he's done this has been Anthony Carlo from AB Sports Conversation doing a podcast out of Iona College talking some sports here with you today hope you enjoyed my segment on Disappointment this past week in professional sports with the recent Adrian Peterson updates as well as uh, as we close out the career to the captain, Derek Jeter. Uh, I will be back here, uh, or you can catch me on AB Conversation every Wednesday, 4.30 with Benzino the Hero. And I hope to see you then.